Back in 2016, with the release of Rogue One, LEGO Star Wars released director Krennic's Imperial Shuttle. However, Disney wanted LEGO Star Wars to go a different direction and release a different set. But nay nay, said LEGO Star Wars designers, let us do this ship, it's way cooler. And I agree it is, and I'm very happy that this exists because we got the director Krennic minifigure, very cool Death Troopers, all great stuff. The other set on the table, though, was a Zeta class shuttle, but they've never made a Zeta class shuttle. Here we are six years later, even with Andor having come out, they haven't revisited Rogue One at all. But Republic Brick sponsored this video and sent me his custom Zeta class shuttle with 2,212 pieces. It's on a site. It costs $420, which is more than it would cost if it was a Lego set, but that's a world of custom Lego sets for you. But I still wanted to take a look at it since it's something Lego never made because they ended up making something else instead. I'm still kind of sad they never revisited Rogue One. Not to say they can't in the future, but it felt like if they were going to do it this year would have been the year with Andor coming out. Maybe with season two in the future, who knows? They could come out with a set like this. But as of now, this is a set Lego doesn't make, and that's where I think custom sets can shine. Let's open this. So if you end up buying one of these, you'll receive all the parts in bags like this, kind of separated by color uh, for the most part, which is one of the great things that RB does well is separating these builds out because like it makes it a lot easier. Custom builds aren't gonna have numbered bags, but getting them at least by color and in some cases exactly by parts makes it really easy to sort and build to a degree. It's never gonna match how easy a Lego set can be to build with the numbered bags, but uh, this, is, this is pretty dang good as far as the organization organization goes. Anyway, lots of parts here. Obviously, it's going to take quite a while to build, but I think the finished product will hopefully be worth that time investment. The finished model on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's kind of got UCS vibes. I mean, it would really need a stand like that UCS Imperial shuttle to make me feel like it's a true UCS model, but this is a very displayable ship. And I must say during the building process, it did have a couple of missing pieces. However, it equally had a lot of extra pieces. So there's that. That's something that I always kind of find odd with the Republic Brick sets. You'll end up with a ton of extra stuff and you question yourself, did you miss something? And I don't think we missed anything here uh, because like you would be able to tell if something was missing it's a pretty straightforward build it's not too messy of a build if that makes sense so you would know if you were missing like a big angled piece here you just would this is a very displayable model it looks absolutely gorgeous and i know up front i said it's 420 bucks but it's currently on sale on his website for 300 which is a price reasonably close to what you might expect lego to charge for this thing with minifigs unfortunately this custom set doesn't come with minifigs i believe a lot of the ones i'm supposed to be reviewing in the future are going to come with minifigs but this one doesn't so for that $300 price tag you're you're just about on the range of what lego would charge for something like this in my opinion uh, it does have a lot of clean new pieces in this case not a lot of used pieces there were definitely a couple in this set but that's something that uh timmy over at republic bricks has definitely cleaned up on the production end which is great now, as far as accuracy goes, the set kind of has it down. It's got a lot of good color here with the light gray running on the inside of the wings and then the nice bright orange at the bottom for like the cargo bay of the Zeta class shuttle, which looks really nice and really pops. It makes this not just your standard gray Star Wars ship that you might see otherwise from Lego Star Wars. Now, as we look to the top of the ship, you can see a lot of greebling to add detail on top of it. So it's not just flat like the wings and it looks really good. It's got a nice texture to it with a nice flow to it. It as well you can see some small handles on there that are going to allow you to pick up different sections of the set here in a moment when we get there the front of it definitely reminds me of kylo ren shuttle it's got kind of the same shape with the same window alignment in my eyes just looks very reminiscent of that and i really like it for that it's kind of crazy how well the angles come together at the front here it's not 100 percent perfect you couldn't really expect it to be with anything but it is very very good here, something I'm very happy with. Underneath the cockpit is the loading ramp, and that's a really neat feature of this set where you can pull this section down and you actually have a loading ramp there. It's not something that's particularly usable. As you can see, it's gonna be tough to fit your hand under there. And it's something that like, if I were to buy this set, I would likely buy it to use it as part of a mock that I would be building for Scarif. And so to have that type of functionality built into it where you have the correct loading ramp sort of thing, where you can have a minifigure coming off of it, it's part of the display I think is fantastic as far as an actual function for something you would use in your day-to-day -day display of a set like this like I'm not going to be using that but for a mock point of view I think that's great 
Now this Zeta class shuttle does have landing gear to separate that cargo bay from the ground and it does its job very well there. Uh, my least favorite part of this set by far though is on the back side here and it's with the engine thrust. Unfortunately, it's just more of like an availability issue where Lego doesn't make this particular piece in translucent light blue. I think it looks bad though. It like definitely sticks out like a sore thumb on the back end of this. And if you'd bought one for yourself, you'd probably wanna change up the design a little bit just so it didn't look like this, but I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it looks great like that. Like I think everything else about it looks great except for those eight quarter circle tile pieces in that like turquoise blue or whatever just looks bad. And while it does look like potentially this opens up or something, like you can kind of open this and pull an engine out, I guess, but it's not like an actual function where there's interior or anything. It's more so just to have that nice angle to it where it closes off nicely. And it's something that is well executed here where everything comes together perfectly. Now, before we look at the interior, I think a lot of people would want to know how the wings work on this. So obviously in their landing position, I think they look good. And I think this is the optimal way to display it if you end up with one of these, or even if Lego made a model of this, I would have it displayed just like this and I would probably never alter it. But you can put the wings down. Kind of the issue is you have some very strong joints on this particular set with three large Technic pieces holding each wing in on the front and the back. And then just so many pieces in between, it kind of becomes this bendy, I don't wanna say mess, but it's definitely a bit bendy where you can move one down and the other one is still in place here. So so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know how you would make it so that if you just move it down, it all comes down. Cause like this makes sure that it doesn't fall down without you wanting to put it down. Like this particular connection piece here, like this was the way to do it. But unfortunately it makes pushing everything down a bit tough. So if you want to put it in flight mode, it's going to take you a minute of like trying to push everything down. And I guess it looks like something's going to fall off. So we can see with one wing down now, looks a little bit wonky, but now the challenge is to get the other wing down and I actually don't know how I'm gonna accomplish this because like you know I was able to put one maybe like this and you can probably barely see me over here <laughs> I don't know if I'm even in frame there's a little bit of elbow grease it is possible to achieve flight mode on this thing and it looks pretty good flying through the air like I said you would need a stand to display this like the UCS Imperial shuttle if you wanted it in this mode in my opinion but it can look good like this on the bottom here. I just hold the top panels on at the bottom here. It's just flat. So you would have to really kind of redesign the whole thing or maybe attach like clear stilt pieces to the bottom of the landing gear that could actually hold this thing up just fine on four points. And then you could have it in its flight mode on a display that could work. But ultimately I think displaying it in a landed mode is optimal. So it's definitely not like a Lego design play function where it's a really easy thing to do. It seems like the connection of the cargo bay is not strong enough to withstand uh, moving these things up and down because it keeps wanting to fall out. So that's another small annoyance. Now getting to the inside of the thing is pretty simple. So the cockpit uh, can just be lifted up and away. It's only got a couple of studs there that hold it down. And then the main cargo section can also be lifted up and away. It has four studs that hold it in place there. Uh, as far as the cockpit goes, you have four seats and a little bit of extra space. It should be tall enough to accommodate a figure, but we'll test it out with Cassian and or in place. And this thing definitely rises up just a little bit. I can't imagine it won't be just fine like that. And it seems like it is. It seems like there's even some flex there. Uh, it's plenty of space for him within the cockpit area. And of course, realistically, you would have like four Imperial pilots. I just couldn't find one handy. Uh, and then we get to the cargo bay, which is very large. So we've got the door at the back, which leads nowhere because of course the engines are back there. So that's a little bit disappointing. Although I'm not sure what the in-universe look of that is or how that functions in universe, but it looks very nice at the back uh, we have a very large cargo area with no cargo included kind of like you could definitely fill this up with troopers and like i was saying the bottom cargo piece seems to fall out a lot so i'm not sure how hard i would have to press like there oh yeah okay so it pops out so it's kind of a good and a bad here like if lego designed this there'd probably be some sort of latch or something to actually hold it in place but with the custom one here you just have these studs it looks like six studs on each side to connect the bottom and pretty heavy cargo bay uh, 
to the rest of the ship. And so obviously the problem there is that it wants to fall down and away from the ship. So we have it disconnected here, I guess. So we'll just pull the whole ship up and away for you to show you. It looks like our landing gear inadvertently came off too. We've got this whole section here, which you could totally fill up with an Imperial army or Imperial supplies or something that would be pretty cool. And I really like the orange. I think it looks great here, uh, but it's a, it's a good section. You could also replace it with something else and build your own thing to add on to the bottom of it if you wanted to. There's a ladder in there too, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that, but this is what the ship looks like completely uh, empty with none of the attachments or anything on there. Let's pop the roof on at least because that will make it look more normal. And so with everything in place and back together there, you can see what the ship looks like without the cargo at the bottom. A very weird look, but this is how it functions in Star Wars, I believe. So really the only downside here to me is just how weak the connection seems to be with this. And it's mostly because this is so heavy, like this definitely wants to fall out of the bottom. I definitely wish they had just made this connect up better instead of having the function of it being able to be released from the bottom of the shuttle. It's something you could obviously modify. Basically, you could just take off these tile pieces on top and replace them with uh, pieces with studs, and then you would have a stronger connection to the bottom of the shuttle here, because I think, yeah, it's just all open studded area, so you could just have more studs be able to connect in there instead of less studs, which would make a stronger connection and ideally remove the inadvertent falling off of this whole section. It's just such a heavy section of the ship. That's why it keeps falling off. And then when you completely remove it, you do have a little bit more of an issue, uh, like with the landing gear and this loading ramp, the landing gear can't go around the loading ramp. So it gets in the way. Like it's a nice idea of a function, but like it just doesn't work as good as it should. So you really have to remove these two front pieces from the landing gear then you're pretty much all set to go. You drop this in, you drop the back section in, push this up, push it together like so, so that it has a good strong connection. So landing gear reconnected, and then our top panels for the shuttle reconnected, and we are good as new. From the perspective of someone that wants something for display, I think this is an excellent set. If you're coming at this from the perspective of someone who wants to make use of the features that I just showed you, such as the uh, cargo bay underneath and the wings being able to fold down, more or less a stay away from that perspective. It just really depends on where you're coming at it from. It looks great for display and it's something that I might throw on my display given that Andor is wrapping up here in the next month and I just feel like it'd be nice to have something of the theme. But uh, for 300 bucks currently on sale on his website, I think a pretty good deal in the world of custom Lego sets. It's gonna look excellent on your display. Now there are certainly bigger, more detailed versions of the Zeta Class shuttle. You can go out and get the Brick Vault model uh, specifically wants 50 bucks for the instructions and then up to $1,200 you'll to pay for the parts on your own that you have to get together you know that's four times the price of this and for four times less i think this is a fair value not to say the brick vault one isn't a fair value either for how big and detailed that model is but if you're looking for something on the more realistic lego end of pricing this isn't too bad so link in the description below if you wanted to pick one up i think code mnr will get you an additional five percent off that 300 hundred dollar price tag if you enjoyed the video hit the like button if you need the channel subscribe and you can check out more reviews on the end screen now